There's our tool that I made for taking the reduction fill cap off of there for the reduction gearbox. And we had some drama with this thing. Went out to take it out this past weekend and just didn't sound right, number one. Number two, it didn't really feel right. And got headed out and brought it back and we were missing of the eight bolts that are on the uh, gear reduction boxes and the spring plate. We were missing two of them and those two were from the same side. Oops. From this side, actually. So probably just got a socket instead of a box in. So, I'm going to top everything off. We're going to top off the transmission too. Get a light in there and see if we can see inside there. It actually, uh, that didn't take as much as I thought it would. Let me let that sit for just a minute and I'll come back and check it. The solution to those bolts backing out, uh, for me, is going to be we're going to tack weld those suckers. I think some of the air, the buses, I'm not sure what years, had a like a lock tab on the back side. I'll show you what I mean when we get back there. This bus did not, at least did not when I got it. But uh, it's kind of notorious that those back out like that. So we're going to weld them. That's not going to happen on this bus again. Not if I can help it. And I can assure you, I will be checking those. All right, that's back on, filled up. And I'm not overly concerned since I could actually see fluid in there. The other thing we're going to do on this side is I'm going to drill out. I have the Chinese jank. Um, hubcap clips and you can see we're missing one here. These are junk and so I have an old rim over on the other side of the carport. Let's go grab it, drill those out. I think they're originals and we'll replace these while we've got this wheel off of here. So this one here will be our sacrificial lamb. It's a uh, five sixty-three, I think it says. But this is a 15, so this will not fit my butt. Well, it will fit the bus. It's the lug pattern's correct, but bus has 14s on it. So we're gonna take uh, those clips off, put them on this one so we can run a hubcap on that. in there and see what we see there's oil laying in the gear so it's not bone dry let's make a little sound though we may have a bearing going on, on the side it's not real bad this side here was definitely lower though
All right, driver's side's all buttoned back up. And I'm gonna jump into the middle of the bus. And while we've got everything out, kinda uh, go ahead and top off the main transmission. Unfortunately, there's not a real good spot where I can put you what we're going for. Right on the side, it's gonna be on the driver's side of the transmission, is a plug. This is it right here. Try and keep my light on it so you can see it. And I'm just gonna use that same bolt that I made. We're gonna pull that out and basically just fill it till it runs out. So. Ugh. Oh, bumped you. Sorry. I'll be in in a minute, buddy. I'm out here working on the truck, okay? Right now. Are you in right now? Not right now. Can you give me five minutes? I need an extension on that sucker. Should have made my bolt longer. It has been a couple days since I topped those boxes off. So I got in and double checked to make sure they were full. They did not appear to be leaking. They are full and we're gonna go with it. On a side note, uh, these tires that are on this truck are junk. I have ordered new ones. I drove it last year uh, to Effingham and we had a pretty epic blowout on the tires I was running and so we just had to go with what we could get and the only place that was open on a Sunday was Walmart so we have a Walmart car tire on here and uh, let's just say it's not a light duty truck tire because the sidewalls on the back just pooch out like crazy so I have ordered a hand kook and those are supposed to be in next week. So as soon as we get those, we'll switch these out. These are fine tires. It's just the wall reinforcement. I don't know what the rating is on it, but I'm going to get the equivalent of an 8-ply. It's a D-rated light truck tire. So I'll put those on and we'll run that and let you know how those do. One of the things I noticed on these tires I have on, I don't know if you can see that right there or not, but caused a bent rim. So these are going, it also feels like you're riding on a marshmallow. And I don't really like that feeling. So definitely need to uh, get these changed out before I make any real trips on it. It got us home and that was the main goal was to just get us get us home. We just took it, took it slow, took it safe. Uh, so after about a thousand miles, these tires just aren't going to make it. They're going to blow out the sidewalls. And you know, in a bus, any Volkswagen really, the back end is where all your weight's sitting. And in a pickup truck, when I'm putting weight back here, you know, that's not ideal. So we will change those suckers out. Popped. Let's get that on the ground and tightened up. One dirty, dingy hubcap coming your way. Done. This other side has a couple of the off brand clips, but they seem to be staying tight. So I think I'm just going to leave them alone. That it has three of the, there's one there, one there, and one there. Three of the old ones. Two replacements are here and here. So I think I'm just going to leave that one alone and not worry about replacing those other two. It seems to be working fine. Pop that hubcap on. 
Tub caps aren't really hard to come by, but it's just really annoying when you hear that thing go ping down the road. I can usually find them, but the last two that have happened, I haven't been able to find them. Yeah, that one's good. All right. Now we've got to tackle the uh, spring plate bolts. So I'm going to take you under there and uh, show you what I'm going to work on. So hopefully you can see good enough. Those three bolts right there and then there's a fourth one hanging out right by the shock. I can't point because I don't have the bus on jacks. I can't get my other hand up there. Let's see if I can... Ah. So this one, this one, this one, and this one keep wanting to back out on this truck for whatever reason. I don't know if it's these boingy marshmallow tires or what's going on. But to get enough thread, we took the lock washers that we were going to use out. And I think in some of the buses there was a, a looped piece of metal that had two holes drilled in it for these two and then another one came down from the top and they had tabs that you bent over. This bus on neither side has those and it doesn't appear on the spring plate that it ever did. I don't see any sign of that and it doesn't have one here either. And a lock washer has backed off of this top one. We had that a lock washer on that one. So what I'm going to do is actually weld the bolt to the spring plate on a place where I could get a roto zip in to cut it if I need to take them out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to back this thing up over to my welder and uh, put it up on some ramps and I'm going to crawl under here and just tack each of these in probably a couple places just so they don't back off again because I definitely don't want that to happen again. These are notorious for backing out. They are notorious for stripping threads and you have to helicoil them or something annoying like that. So I've got eight of those to do and then this girl should be, or I should say boy since it's rusty, should be ready to ride. Incidentally, it's kind of tight under here, so I don't know that I'll video any of that, but I'll show you the finished product when I get all done. Uh, we did, these are supposed to be torqued to uh, 72 foot-pounds, I believe. Uh, we got this side almost to 60 and the other side to 62 and decided to stop because we don't want to strip them out any further. So they are not to spec, so that's why I'm welding them in. Couldn't have cut that any closer if I'd tried. Can't really tell what I'm talking about there, can you? Hang on. Now do you see it? That was a little bit on the close side, wasn't it? Now if I can just back it out without hitting it. Hmm. Think I can do it? Yeah, let's do it. One thing about those marshmallow tires. I knew when I hit the pocket. Let's get her welded up. And just a little reminder, before you weld on anything that has a battery, unhook the battery. Well, there's my redneck solution to those boogers backing off again. And I tried to make it where if the bolt actually started to turn, it was going to hit a spot, you know, on it so that when it starts to back off and come unthreaded, the point of the bolt hopefully is going to hit a clump of weld if it does act like it's going to come off. That stuff's really uh, <laughs> challenging to weld though because there's so much gunk and funk on it. This other side, let me spin you around over here. Ugh. I am <laughs> just far enough. I can't reach it's as far as my welder will go. I can't reach this top one here. But I got the uh, the three down below, and I think what I'm going to do is back the truck up, hook the battery back up, back it up, and I'll go ahead and get that last one and just not put it on the ramps. I think I can get under here. It'll be a tight fit with a welding helmet on, but I think I can get under here without putting it on the ramps. So uh, I don't think there's any need to show you that, but that's what I came up with as a solution, and hopefully that'll keep those bad boys from coming off again. And uh, you can see where that one was actually leaking. This is not brake fluid. That's, you can tell by the smell, that's 80, 90 gear oil. So it looks like it's leaking down here at the brake, but it's not. It's actually hitting up here and dripping down. You can see where it's coming down. I've actually uh, 
wire wheeled most of that off of there, but you could actually see where the trail was, where it was leaking down. So that is not a brake leak. That is a gear leak. And it was coming out of this bottom one when it was loose. So we're gonna call that good for today anyway. Can't come back much further. At least not at that angle. So show you how tight of a fit this is. Oh. Ouch. I really can't tell. <laughs> There's probably six inches of clearance between the hitch. Right here's my hitch and the ground. I couldn't go back up on my ramps because I was hitting the tailpipe. Got this tailpipe hanging down. It was hitting right there because I'm kind of down in this valley right before the garage, so I am going to have to weld that sucker around my belly. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that's how much helmet clearance I had, i.e. none. Let's see if I can turn the camera back on myself here. Hang on. Got a little tight. So I can barely get my helmet in there. I'm just lazy. I could have put it on a jack and put it on jack stands, but I'd rather crawl around in the dirt. Makes me feel like I'm doing something. Lost part of that dead maple in the winds. We had 60 mile an hour winds just a couple days ago. And uh, got the chainsaw out to get it going. And of course, jank Chinese plastic, even though it is a, a good steel chainsaw, they've cheapened them. So of course, I had to work on it, but got to cut up into small enough pieces to burn, at least. He doesn't know I'm filming. Top could use a good cleaning. Get a few water spots on it. Nice thing is that canvas, it comes right off, but let's roll it up for the drive.